بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. One of the things which is observable uh, in some of the classes and the different places where people learn is that there are a lot of students which seem to struggle. So they may spend many years studying some books and after all those years they haven't achieved much in terms of knowledge, in terms of uh, systematic uh, knowledge that they can benefit from. So this is something that is not new, it's not something that is just happening now. So some of the scholars have already spoken about this and as some of them have mentioned for example that passion alone is not enough. So when we were looking at Sheikh Uthaymeen's Sharh of Hilya, we noticed uh, and summarized the introduction by the author Rahimahullah and one of the points that the author mentioned was that passion alone is great to see this enthusiasm in students that they want to learn there's a kind of uh, uh, an awakening of people that want to learn the religion but passion alone is not enough there has to be someone to guide you on how to learn what books to study what is the what are the etiquettes of learning and what are the pitfalls of learning and uh, it's important that a student takes time to study those books that scholars have written that are kind of like roadmaps on this journey of learning and study at least one book and then read other books alongside it whether it be on manners of learning the pitfalls of learning things to be aware of on the path of learning but at least one book and I normally say Sheikh Uthaymin's Sharh of Hilya it's a very good book for someone to actually study and then after that or alongside that also read other books so passion alone is not enough there has to be some methodology that the student is taking in studying and one of the scholars uh, that his name is Az-Zanurji Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned in his book Ta'lim Al-Muta'allim Tariq Al-Ta'allum uh, he mentions in his introductions فَلَمَّا رَأَيْتُ كَثِيرًا مِنْ طُلَّابِ الْعِلْمِ فِي زَمَانِنَا يَجِدُّونَ إِلَى الْعِلْمِ وَلَا يَصِلُونَ لِمَا أَنَّهُمْ أَخْطَأُوا طَرِيقَهُ وَتَرَكُوا شَرَائِطَهُ وَكُلُّ مَنْ أَخْطَأَ الطَّرِيقَ ضَلْ وَلَا يَنَالُ الْمَقَصُودَ قَلَّ وَوْجَلْ When I saw that many students or many from the students of knowledge in our time were taking the path and were kind of serious in learning or taking the path to knowledge uh, but they were not reaching the destination due to the fact that they uh, made mistakes in its path and they left, uh, they left the, the conditions of seeking knowledge and whoever makes a mistake with regards to the path will end up going the wrong way, being misguided i.e. if you don't take the right path, if you make a mistake in the pathway you'll end up arriving at the wrong destinations and he will not attain that which he is seeking, I, what he is intending to attain, I the knowledge, he will not attain it, whether it is a small amount or it is a great amount. And so I decided to clarify for them the path of learning. And this is part of his introduction with regards to learning knowledge in Islam, what to learn, what to study, how to study it, what teacher to pick and so forth. So it's important then as a student that we uh, or as general Muslims as well that we try to learn how to learn and try to avoid the obstacles so one of the reasons another scholar we're going to look at what another scholar says uh, in this topic of why many people struggle he says اعلم أن كثيرا من الناس يقضون السنين الطوال في تعلم العلم know that Many people spend, or many from people, or many people spend many years in learning knowledge. بل في علم واحد, rather in even one subject. ولا يحصلون منه على طائل وربما قضوا أعمارهم ولم يرتقوا عن درجة المبتدئين وإنما يكون ذلك لأحد الأمرين. And that perhaps they may even spend uh, many years. Or many of their yeah many of their years uh, seeking this knowledge, yet they do not move above the level of beginners, 
and that is for one of two reasons so this is the issue at hand why are many people spending many years learning going to classes but they don't seem to get knowledge that is above a beginner's level uh, as a side note alhamdulillah they, inshallah if their intention is right and so forth they will get the reward for going but in terms of the knowledge why are they not getting the knowledge so this author says rahimahullah mentions there are two reasons the first reason he says ahaduhuma uh, the one of the two reasons عدم الذكاء الفطري وانتفاء الإدراك التصوري is the fact that the person has a natural a lack of natural intelligence or they lack the ability to comprehend or picture something in their head so they, they cannot get the masail that are being mentioned they cannot fathom what's being said they cannot comprehend it naturally they're not intelligent and he says with regards to this هذا لا كلام لنا فيه ولا في علاجه uh, in this issue we don't have anything to say about it no do we have anything to say about how to cure this uh, and alhamdulillah this is something that Allah gives to people and he doesn't give to some people uh, the person shouldn't be uh, if he cannot if he hasn't got the intelligence then alhamdulillah is not accountable for what he hasn't got but as for the second reason now the author mentions والثاني الجهل بطريق التعليم وهذا قد وقع فيه غالب المعلمين فتراهم يأتي إليهم يأتي إليهم الطالب المبتدئ ليتعلم النحو مثلا and the second one for why many people don't learn or they don't reach don't go beyond the beginners level is an ignorance with regards to the ways of teaching and this is something that many or most of the teachers have fallen into and he mentions that a student may come to them to a teacher you'll see that a student comes to them and uh, the teacher will end up making uh, the student comes to him to learn for example he gives an example with grammar Arabic grammar so the teacher will make him busy what will he make him busy with he'll make him busy uh, he says فيشغلون فيشغلونه بالكلام على البسملة ثم على الحمدلة أياما بل شهورا. They make him busy with explaining the بسملة at the بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم at the start. Then الحمدلة. And how long did it take for months or for days rather months? The Sheikh says here for days. They make it. They make the student, the beginner student, busy for. Days rather months. Why do they do that? ليوهموه ساعة مداركهم وغزارة علمهم. They do that in order to make him, uh, to to make the student, the teacher is doing that, to show the student the vastness of their knowledge. Uh, they want to show the student how much knowledge they have and their understanding and how deep rooted their knowledge is, and then. If the student ثم إذا قدر له الخلاص من ذلك أخذوا يلقنونه متنا أو شرحا. So if the student is then blessed, he, it is decreed for the student. Alhamdulillah, he manages to survive that. Then they begin to teach him a metan or a sharh. Uh, then begin to teach him a book or an explanation of the book. But how do they do that? بحواشيه وحواشي حواشيه. ويحشرون له خلاف العلماء ويشغلونه بكلام من رد على القائل وما وما أجيب به على الرد ولا يزالون يضربون له على ذلك الوتر حت... <laughs> and, and uh, the teacher then will take the student and teach him a matan or a sharh and they don't just teach him the matan or the sharh they will teach him with the footnotes and the uh, uh, the footnotes of the footnotes or the side notes of the footnotes and they bring forth the teacher will mention the differences of opinion of all of different scholars on this issue and they will make the student then busy with who replied to this opinion and what did he say in his reply and they do this back and forth going into the details deep 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 until the student is left thinking that this knowledge is unattainable I'll never be able to grasp this knowledge 
unless something you know miraculous happens to me if if something miraculous happens and i become some sort of like uh, super pious person or a wali or something like that then i'll be able to attain this knowledge allahu musta'an so uh, this is a book it's called al madkhal one of the the sheikhs was explaining a lesson he, he brought this as an introduction uh, and it's a, it's about fiqh but he's mentioned this as a faida for the different subjects so there's some things that we can take away from it or things that we should think about one of those things in general is that the scholars may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them they wrote mukhtasarat for a reason they wrote the books that are short or concise for a reason if they wanted to they had enough knowledge to be able to write bigger books by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission a sheikh he, he can write a thousand a book that is a thousand pages but in order to make it easier for the beginner he wrote a book that's five pages or ten pages or twenty pages so a person should try to remember that so if you're studying a book that's ten pages it's made ten pages for a reason if the sheikh had wanted he could have made it a thousand pages so remember the purpose of why you're studying this book why was this book selected why was it authored who was the intended reader and so forth more specifically with regards to students some things that students can think about is this should help us to understand where we may be going wrong in some of uh, the lessons that we select to go to because if you're a young person your parents are the ones that tell you where to study but when you're older and maybe you don't have someone to guide you on what to study then you have to make your own decision one of the things that perhaps will make you will make it easier for you to know to make this decision is to see how the text that you're studying is being taught so if the text is 10 pages how how much of the speech of the author in the original text are you understanding or is it is the text being explained in too much detail that you've lost because sometimes the teacher may explain it in a lot of detail because there is a fact that there is a benefit and the students you know most of the students are able to follow along that's fine but if you as a student now are attending and you're lost for example the the conditions of salah at night al islam and so forth al aql al tamiz and the teacher is going into difference of opinion on each one and you're you're confused now you don't even know which opinion is right Th then you may be over your head so think about that from that angle now having said that that doesn't mean that you 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 go and rebuke your teacher you go and say you know teacher you're wrong you shouldn't teach like this the sh sheikh so and so in this book said this that the other no it doesn't mean you speak to your teacher in that way but you can ask your teacher you can ask for advice i'm struggling to keep up with the pace of the lessons i'm not really remembering what in the text because there are too many opinions and things being mentioned uh, but it doesn't mean that you just straight away will think bad of the teacher no there may be a reason why the teacher has had to do that in a certain lesson but with regards to you picking what lessons to attend then just remember in your head that when you study a book if you if you're going to study a book that's 10 pages make sure you understand what the author is saying then when you want to go to a bigger book either to the next level up then you go to a book that's 100 pages for example with regards to the teachers something that teachers can take away is that uh, you know these words that this uh, that can be found in al madkhal to the madhab of imam ahmed are advices and other books not just that are advices which uh, are very important uh, and i'm sure that most of the teachers will know that the the, the ayah where it says walakin kunu rabbaniyina bima kuntum tu'allimuna al kitaba wa bima kuntum tadrusun and uh, part of that rather on the contrary he would say be you rabbaniyun learned man of religion who practice what they preach and also preach preach to others and also the statement that that is the one who teaches the small of the knowledge and then goes on to the bigger part or before the bigger part i.e uh, he cultivates the people so he teaches them what they can handle at first and then goes on to the harder the the more uh, detailed parts so it's important then that the, as a student who you might be teaching you might be a student of knowledge coming back from studying with the scholars 
So remember that the people in front of you may not be students of knowledge, they may not be on your level. So make sure that the knowledge that you teach, how you teach the lessons are appropriate to those people in front of you, that inshallah ta'ala they will be able to benefit. Don't remember that uh, the lessons are not a stage for the teacher to display his knowledge, you know, to go into details that most people or 99% of the students will get confused on. Uh, and if you need to, or if you want to revise certain topics, then maybe make a separate lessons where for the advanced students or the students that are closer to that level, then you can also revise what you've learned and then have a separate lesson for the general people and for the beginner students as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us the ability to learn and benefit from our learning. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, maybe in one of the, the next clips we'll mention uh, how to what some of the advice of the scholars in how to give a sharh, how to explain something, points to keep in mind when explaining books. Wallahu and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and with him lies true success.